Hi everyone, Armored Pants here and I have a new video for you in the American line, the tier 9 T92E1, the missile tank, missile light tank and uh, this is a video that many of you have asked me for. Now we're going to have a look at the tech spec, we're going to use blitzhanger.com as we always do, that is a fantastic asset that all blitzers should use. This tank, I've played me over 200 games in it, it is a fantastically fun tank, I have to say that. It's a missile tank, right, you know, long anticipated, very much waited for. Many of you want to play it, want to get it, already have it. Looking for some guidance, guided missile, sorry, apologize for that. But in my opinion, this tank is OP. It's fucking way OP. Too OP for the game in many ways. And we're going to explore all those together. Now, it is an amazing light tank, even without the missiles. And we're going to put the missiles to the side for the moment. Um, it just is a very, very good tank, right? And we'll discuss all of the reasons why as we go through the review. Now, I would run Coca-Cola on this. The view range is 302 meters, which really helps for a light tank. There are two gun options, but you want the top gun, right? It has the missiles, right? The other gun doesn't. 105 millimeter gun, it's still quite big. The 152 millimeter gun is what you want because the top gun is what this tank is all about, missiles. And launch them while you can because Honestly speaking, I think that they're going to go because they, there's a lot of complaints about it, but also they're not uh, compatible with Blitz. The DPM seems low, but it's not because you don't fire all the time anyway. And this tank has great DPM in uh, actual DPM versus theoretical DPM. It has two shell types, APCR and HE. You get 240, uh, 240 millimeters of pen on the APCR. Muzzle velocity is 920 meters per second on both shell types, the APCR and the HE going up to 1196 meters per second with supercharge, both shells are the same. I say there's only two shell types because the missile is not a shell, obviously, and we're gonna discuss that in a second. We get 16 second reload. If you don't use calibrated shells, it goes up to 17.2 calibrated shells, which in my opinion is too long. Uh, therefore, um, I don't run it. And you need to make your shots count because with such a long reload, you need to make your shots count. It's a long wait to reload your next round. I would run vertical stabilizer because um, you're going to fire a lot in this tank um, when you're moving, right? It's a light tank, it's an agile tank, so therefore you're going to fire lots, so therefore run vertical stabilizer. Now you want to get the top gun, but obviously you need to grind to that. So the 105 millimeter gun, let's have a look at the stats on that because it's very, very different, right? Firstly, you don't have the missiles. You've got three shell types, APCR, heat, standard heat, and HE. You have a 7.58 second reload if you don't run calibrated shells. It goes up to 8.15 seconds if you run calibrated shells. You get 220 millimeters of pen with APCR, 270 uh, with um, heat, and 50 with HE. Going back to the missiles. The missiles on the top gun give you 340 millimeters of pen. Yet yeah, you read that right, 340 millimeters of pen, which is just fucking wow, right? Massive wow factor in that. And you do 560 damage points, it's the same as your standard APCR uh, rounds. You don't drop any damage points, which is unusual for Prama, right? But the muzzle velocity is 59 meters per second. What? I you say, yeah, it's 59 meters per second. What does that mean? It means even if you're shooting a target only 100 meters away, it's gonna take two seconds to get there, right? It's a completely different gun system, completely different gun handling. The tank itself does 65 kilometers an hour, 22 in reverse, so it's very um, fast and agile. Concealment figures are very good. 202 meters view range tank it needs to get into 239 meters of view if you're not mo if you're not firing. Uh, but if you fire, you blow those numbers out of the water. You lose 50 degrees, 50 meters of concealment. And if it, all of that wasn't enough, it also has 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of elevation, so it's an amazing gun alignment. It also has great power to weight ratio, which we uh, briefly touched on when we looked at the speed. So it's, it takes off really quickly. It's like grease lightning. Um, and it has great traverse, so it's a great brawler. And it's tiny. We look here at it, right? It has no armor, but that is not really such a big disadvantage. It does have some armor. You're gonna get bounces off that turret to beat the band, and it's a tiny target. It's very difficult to hit. And you're gonna see in the games we play, I get massive amounts of troll bounces on this thing because it's so small and that gun mantlet and that little bit of armor there that we're looking at in the front is bouncing shots. And because it's such a small target though, and if you're constantly moving because it's so fast, you're gonna get loads of bounces off angles. A shell hit, hit them at acute angles and just bounce off. 
and it's really frustrating for the players that play against play against you and you're going to see massive amounts of bounces in the game the gameplay we're going to look at and bounces that shouldn't happen on normal light tank with no armor and the thing is just troll I mean the games that we're going to look at you're going to see this tank it does things that shouldn't be possible in the game I mean, i'm not even talking about the missiles we're going to look at the missiles in a second but forget about the missiles just without the missiles this tank is just way op and um, so i'm running i've played 220 something games in this tank right i only have it on this account and i'm running like a 72 percent win rate it's just amazing right at tier nine and bear in mind, I was up tier for probably 60 or 70% of those games. I'm playing against tier 10 or tier 9. And I'm still running 72% win rate. The thing is just mentally, insanely OP. Um, so that's why I'm saying, like, okay, it's not good for the game. But play it while you can. Play this tank while you can. Because they're definitely going to do something with it. Probably going to drop the missiles, but they're definitely going to reduce its speed or its power to weight ratio or do something, right? Because of right now it's way op um and you know yeah so anyway let's look at the missiles because you've only got one life so rocket right again sorry for the bad pun now we're just going to have a look at, we're going to look at easy shots starting off it and go up to more complex shots here's easy shot switch up to the uh, missile slow it down you see no pen switch up to the pramo which is your missile in this case uh, slow it down you see now you've got pen fire it off um, and then I look at that bounce. See, yeah, I mean, off a light tank, uh, you know, just again, another easy shot on it. Just, um, you know, coming up behind the scent uh, here, launch the missile. You fire the missile, and um, while the missile is midair, you can redirect it, right? So um, it doesn't matter if it's on target at the start, you can put it back on the target. I want to have a look at that in a second. But I fire, you know, I'm slightly above the target. So normally you'd miss, but I just guide it back down right into the back of the scent. Bam, Bob's your uncle. Again, look here in the tortoise. I just guide it straight into the vulnerable part of the side of the tortoise. And, you know, if the tortoise moves while I'm firing, then in actuality, you can guide it back onto the point of the armor that's vulnerable. You can So unlike other types of shots where you fire the tank moves or changes its aspect to you and your shot bounces with this you can guide it into the front of a part look at that so the conqueror there is moving away from me so i'm in cover right i see the conqueror i'm tracking him with the with the aiming pixel and now i fire i'm not even aiming directly at him i can just and he moves right so normally that would i would miss because he moves guide it straight into the back of his turret bam maximum roll now we're going to look at more complex shots now look at this fucking shot look at it in real time just look at this this is mental look at that that's just fucking mental i'm sorry uh, i mean look at this look when we slow it down right now this chieftain is fast the chieftain is a fast heavy right it's like a, a helium right i fired out like way off it's, where's that going like it's going way off into this is going to hit the farmhouse right it's like eh, eh, it ain't no fucking danger right nope Guide it back onto him, right up his ass, Vindaloo around, kablamo, game over, um, don't pass go, don't collect $200. Um, now, this shot here is just, sorry, it's insane. And it has no right to be in this game. We're going to look at it real time, right? And you're probably thinking, what the fuck, what happened there? Right, watch this, this is just mental, right? So this AMX 5100, right? I can't hit him, right? He's in cover, right? He's behind the dune, right? Launch off the missile, right? Now the missile is doing 59 meters per second, right? That's about 400 meters away, 380, something like that. So the missile, and you're probably thinking, okay, well, what's going on here? Where is the missile gone? You know, has it gone off into space or what's going on, you know? Nope, missile, it's on its way, right? Now this guy, he has no hope, right? I mean, this guy, he's in cover. And um, not he doesn't he doesn't think there's anybody has a bead on him. So he's moving forward to engage the enemy as he should do, right? Because the enemy is in front of him to the right of the map. I zoom in now, right? I mean I launched that fucking missile yesterday, right? This poor guy comes out of cover. Look, missile's still on its way, and I just guide it right into him. Smash! into the side of him 550 roll poor guy doesn't know why hits him 
and I'm sorry, that's just meant you should be able to do that, right? That guy should be in cover, that guy should have been safe, I shouldn't have had a shot. And when he moves out, there's no way I should be able to fire over those hills and then bend it into him when he comes out, uh, uh, when he comes into range. I mean, it's just mental, right? Again, here, look, I've got two potential targets. I was going to go for the tortoise, right? But then I see that, by the way, this is the same guy. That's that poor AMX again. I had that guy tormented with these fucking missiles, right? Look at this, you know? So I fire, you know, I was going towards the tortoise, changed the shot. You saw it snaking away towards him. I can roll back while it's in flight and I just smash him, right? It's just, it's not fair, right? It's just not fair. And by the way, even aside without the missiles, the, the tank is OP anyway. Okay, so we're gonna look some, we're gonna have three games. We've got one in Normandy, which is the first one, right? Now, this game is noteworthy. Um, you know, I do my standard thing, check this head up, right? I'm gonna go towards B, because I'm in a light tank with good view range, good gun depression, and I'm a tiny target. So I'm gonna use the speed of the tank Get this big gun into play and hopefully spot up the enemy at B as well, right? Good standard light tactics, light tank tactics, and helping my team. Now, um, what you need to note in this game is the number of bounces that I get. It's just insane stuff, right? And I'd like to say, hey, I'm a skillful player. I played for them. I didn't. I absolutely did not, right? What I did is... What I always do when I play light tanks or fast movement tanks is I kept moving, right? Because you want to make it as difficult as possible for the enemy to hit you. But that said, if I was in another light tank, a lot of these shots that bounce off me here would have gone straight through and would have taken me out. I shouldn't have survived this game, right? Um, but, um, oh, sorry, that was just my flight to Zurich. I caught it, by the way. It was on time. So, um, so you know, um, this tank is just insanely OP. Because, um, but this is not a fluke in this game. Uh, you're going to see in the next game, AMS all the time. And I don't know if it's RNG or it's a tank itself or the fact that it's just so small. I, it's probably a combination of all those things. The fact that it's so small, right? So look at that, right? If you see there, it gets a standard B, right? I'm so small. By the way, this Pantera, he is not a happy camper. I don't know what language that is. Russian, Belarusian, something like that. He is not a happy camper. Um, definitely not happy with me, I think, or his team or whatever. Uh, maybe somebody who can identify that language and can translate in the comment section might tell us. Um, by the way, if you're wondering why I went APCR instead of HE there, HE is notoriously um, um, fickle over long distances like that. Uh, APCR is better, so I wanted to make sure of the, uh, of the, of the hit onto the Scorpion. There to get that standard B. You know, this shot I was going to say that I took earlier in the standard B, I was able to fit that through uh, between the um, the uh, uh, hull um, of the uh, destroyed um, Pantera and um, the it's and it's 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 muzzle right, um, and I'm so small that the standard B couldn't get a shot at me right. So you know, I'm down to 352. Um, hit points right so i'm pretty much a one shot for a lot of the guns out there um you know and look at this t um 95 here now i thought i was going to get shot into the back of him then he moved so that's why i put a he round into him instead of a, an apcr and you're going to see the missile in effect here and how good it is when we when i go onto the t95 and you're also going to see a massive bounce off that t95 which just shouldn't happen right so you, you get these bounces in this tank and as I said, it's they're not flukes or just I got lucky in this game. They happen in all the games. It's even worse in the next game you're going to see. And when I say worse, it's great for me, but it's worse for the opposition players, right? And this happens all the time. Now, as I said, I kind of probably help it a bit because I continuously move in this tank and I'm moving, swiveling, I'm moving the tour all the time. So I'm probably creating really difficult. Look at this. Look, just look at that. Poof. I mean, like that shouldn't happen, right? Just look at this. You know, and then um, I'm able to switch up to the H, uh, to the heat, to the missile. So let's just have a look at that again. Massive bounce off him. I know I'm creating awkward angles for him, and it's a tiny target, and he probably hits the apex of metal of the armor plates together. Uh, but still, I mean, he has to feel hard done by right. Um, and then I just switch up to the H, uh, to the heat, which is the missile, the guided missile. I fire 
and I fire and then I can guide it right into the vulnerable part there you see I just guide it straight into the vulnerable part and um, in real time take him out right and there's another massive bounce going up here from the IS and again this guy he starts complaining again I think it's Russian or Belarusian I'm not really sure but he's definitely not happy anyway right so I fire a shot at him trying to track him trying to put it into the wheel into the wheel housing it doesn't go through and I'm rolling back look at that now I thought during the game he hit me in the gun mantle but he didn't he hit me down on the lower part of the armor where there is no armor so this should have gone straight through and obviously he quite rightly is very unhappy about it. I'm guessing he's saying he's unhappy. I don't really know what it means. As I said, if anybody watching um, does know, maybe you can tell me what, uh, what he's saying. And to make matters worse and to rub salt into his wounds, I come along and take him out. Which, I, you know, it's just unfair, right? I mean, I should have been gone. Like two or three times in that game, I should have been gone. It's just mentally OP, this tank. You know, almost 4K of damage, first class mastery badge. Now you probably noticed in that game I didn't fire the uh, missiles very often and in the 200 odd games I've played in it I actually don't fire missiles that often during the games obviously as I played more games of the tank and I became more familiar with using the missiles I fired more but the missiles um, are a completely different type of gameplay and you have to think more about it you also have to spend a bit longer um, strategizing about how to use them. And that affects your gameplay in many ways, right? Also the fact that they move while fired and you need to guide them onto the target, etc., means that it alters your gameplay. So um, as I um, you know, played with it, I found it in many times easier just to use standard rounds, right? You don't need to use the missiles all the time but then you can use them for some of those wicked shots that we saw uh, when we looked at that uh, montage of the missile uh, missile firing sequences at the start before we looked at the gameplay again this game is just insane i mean just watch this game it's just incredible and these are not like games which are atypical as i said these this is happening all the time like it's just crazy stuff so again, I check the setup. I decide to go to A, use the speed of the tank. Um, you know my um, philosophy when I play supremacy: get the points as early as possible. It's like investing your pension. The earlier you do it, the better it is. So many times I've won uh, supremacy games by uh, getting failed the driving test there, by getting um, points early in a game, and you know sometimes winning when you're only like um, you know one against three or four tanks. Um, so bank your points as early as possible. Going back to what I was saying about the the tank itself, right? You don't need, you could play this tank really well without using missiles. You don't need to use them, right? They are an added bonus when they allow you to do things that they cannot be done with other tanks, right? Um, now, my point of view on the missiles is you saw that you can do insane shots that you should not be able to do. And the problem is, they're all, the missiles are only in two tanks at the moment, right? But I think that they need to be taken out not because i don't like them not because they're not good not because they're not good fun by the way just slow this down here look to put the he around and you get massive rolls with the he here 90 millimeters of pen you get massive big he rolls as i did in the t44 there so don't forget about your he he and apc or fire is normal shells and you can do your normal standard damage going back to the thing about the missiles and we discuss it also when we look at the Sheridan video, which I have the footage for. And again, I have a montage of missile shots there. If you're a blitz player, right? There, and you're, you're a good blitz player and you've invested time and effort into becoming a good blitz player. There are certain things that you know how to do and that you do well, right? For example, if you're in a heavy tank, angling up your armor, right? making sure that you bounce shots look at this bounce here by the way just exactly what how is that possible you know um but and you know so somebody fires around at you you angle up your tank and you get a bounce right you can't do that anymore because let's say you're in an e100 or something like that right you angle up to me i would fire around it bounces off right you're playing your heavy tank well and skills that have taken you a long time to acquire right i know i sound like Liam Neeson here i will find you and i will make you watch a video but you know 
you've, you've, you've spent a long time acquiring those skills that allow you to do that to get those bounces, right? That's all out the window now because I fire, you, you have your tank at a certain angle, right? And then I just change the aspect of the flight of the shell and it goes into a vulnerable part. And when we look at the Sheridan, you're gonna see that. And you saw when we looked at that shot I did, an impossible shot I did on that um, poor AMX, right? He's in cover, you know, nobody has a bead on him. He moves out of cover to engage the enemy. And then this missile, which is being fired like 20 minutes ago, just smashes into him, does massive alpha roll on him. It's just not fair, right? But it totally destroys the skill set of other players. And that's why I think it, they have to go. Um, because, you know, it totally affects the dynamic of Blitz. Um, we we'll come back to this in a second. Um, going back to this game here, I mean, look at me. What am I hanging on on here? 64 hit <laughs> points. And I, I, we win this game. I actually take out this IS-8. I took out the T-54E1. Um, the bounces that I'm getting to this thing are just incredible. Look, there's another one coming up here. Look at this. Bam, put around into him. And I bounce that shot off the IS-8. Like, it's just insane. Like... It, I think he hit the mantlet on it, right? And you saw the, the Ding uh, T-59. How many bounces did he have on me, right? I think he kept hitting the turret or something. But, you know, the, we looked at the arm inspector. It doesn't really have even that much turret armor. It's just the mantlet. That's it. Look at that. Like, even my own team can't believe that we won that game. You know, 4.2, 4.3k of damage. Um, I only live as a second-class mastery badge. But, you know, look, Spartan badge. Spartan badge and light tank. Who does that? I mean, you know, I don't think I only remember ever doing that once before in a in the light tank, in all the tens of thousands of games I've played. I mean, it's and by the way, I didn't even use missiles in that game, and it's still OP. You know, it's just the tank is just broken. It's just mental. It's just it's fucking awesome, but it's still awesome, you know, because what's going to happen is, you know, the only way that you can that they can be fair is that everybody at tier 9 is just going to be driving these right <laughs> to even things out and how boring would that be um, but like then some people don't like playing light tanks right and I know many players who just love playing TDs and heavy tanks they don't like to play lights right um, for various different reasons some of their old farts on their right side's gone right so they prefer to just sit back and you know they need a big tank to play with on a small screen right so um, okay fine um, they don't want to play light tanks, right? And But their heavy tank skills are out the window because, you know, the guy's angling up to you and he's 75, right? You fire a missile at him, three seconds later it gets there when he's moved and you hit him straight in the side. And it's just not fair. And it just spoils all of the skills and all of the techniques that Wargaming, by the way, have worked so hard. And, you know, I criticize Wargaming quite a lot, but they've worked so hard to make this game balanced and to create skills that be can, that can be acquired that separate good players from bad players and that you can practice to become a good player and uh, get knowledge and skills that other players don't have and don't know how to utilize and that separates you what makes good players from average players from really super unicorn players right but all that goes out the fucking window it de gets defenestrated when um when you're playing with this thing because you can fire over hills you can do impossible shots like that one in the amx that shot that I did on the Chief, this is just mental, that shot, wasn't it? I mean, like, just boomeranged right up his ass. I mean, you know, it's just mental, right? And you'll see when we do the Sheridan video as well, like, you know, I fire a shot. There's a guy in a light tank, I think it's another Sheridan, actually, and he's driving away from me at top speed. And I'm able to fire a missile, and the missile chases him and smashes him right up the ass. Right, so you know, one of the key skills of a light tank is that it's agile and mobile. And when you get into trouble, you hit the afterburners and you get the flock out of dodge, right? But that doesn't work if somebody's firing a missile that follows you and hits you up the ass, right? So all of the skills that are being acquired, all of the the, the different tactics that you use in different tanks just go out the fucking window when you're with this when the, when you use these missiles, right? Um, and yeah. Okay, look, the missiles are not easy to use. They're difficult. There is difficult, but you can acquire the skill, right? Um, and I just think that they need to be taken out and because they're just too much fun and too good and change the whole aspect of the game and negate so many skills that make Blitz the game it is. 
Um, yeah. So anyway, going back to this game, this is a mastery game in this, by the way. And again, I don't even think I've fired a missile in it. Um, you know, I just utilize this as a light tank. The APCR, the gun and the APCR is really, really good, by the way. And the HG rounds are great. You're going to see a fantastic um, kill on the Panther II coming up here. This is about shell selection. Loading up the HE and I take him out with one round. Um, it's a really big alpha roll. Take him out, set him on fire, really nice. Now, I capture A. Um, you know, um, I showed my clan mates this game, I post on our clan page, and you know, they were saying, oh, you took a bit of a risk going up the heavy channel to A on your own. To be honest with you, in this tank, I didn't feel any risk. Okay, I'm looking at the minimap, I know there's probably not anybody there. If there is somebody there, there's one heavy. In this tank, I had no fear. I had no fear. It doesn't matter what's there. Um, you know, okay, I don't think, I'm not up here in this game, but even if there's an E100 or whatever there, it's so fast, so agile, you've got so much firepower. You know, you, I don't, honestly didn't care. You know, it doesn't matter who's there. And this thing, I was like, um, you know that scene from um, Goldeneye? Was it Boris? I am invincible. Yeah, it's just the way you feel in this tank. You just feel fucking invincible. I mean, I did. And the stats prove it. Like, I think, as I said, um, 72. 2% win rate or something like that after 220 games or something it's just there you see the missiles are fallible right so I wasn't able to pen the, the ST1 there so uh, I so sorry I did for a missile but it didn't have any effect and um, I have a almost a perfect game up to here and um, I've said this to you before when I'm chasing the mastery badge I uh, sometimes throw caution to the wind and um, I knew Todd was a mastery badge on here and I actually drive straight into the rock, fail the driving test again, get smashed by the ST1, and I could have taken a massive round from the um, from the KP as well. So that was just, you know, after a really almost perfect piece of game play up to that point, I just make an absolute mess out of it. Anyway, I decided to calm down a bit, take another big round, but I'm able to clear the, uh, the camp panzer. And now we come back onto the ST1. I actually thought that he was still on a reload, but he gets me again. The ST1 is a good player, by the way. Um, sorry, I get a bounce up, but I thought that he was. Um, I thought that he was uh, reloading, but I actually maybe hit adrenaline. I didn't count it properly. And then the Pantera, obviously, with that fantastic gun system he has, he takes him out um, just as I was about to pull the trigger. Just uh, no, I don't get the last kill. Uh, but still, I think I got uh, f uh, five kills, right? So um, uh, two base captures spotting and stuff like that so that delivers the mastery badge less much less damage in this game than we saw in the previous two games i think but you know uh, it's almost 3.5k damage and um, but as we always say mastery badges are about xp um, and you, uh, by the way in this tank right now because everybody's playing it plus you've got all of the testers and super unicorns playing it you need over 1500 xp to master it so yeah don't so don't worry if you don't master it you know, 1400 XP, which normally masters a tier 9, is only going to get you a first class master badger. In some cases, a second class master badger in this. There's too many players playing that, and too many really, really super unicorn players playing at the moment. So you need over 1500 XP to master it. The same with the Sheridan. I think you need 1550 in that. So, no shame in not mastering these tanks right now. Yeah, but don't worry when the when the games when tank stats plateau and become normal again, um, you'll be able to have a shot at mastering it. So there we saw three games with this, what I believe is OP tank. Um, it's fast, agile, great power to weight ratio, great gun, big alpha rolls. Okay, it has a long reload, but okay, so what, you know? Okay, let's have a recap. Um, this is just, uh, by the way, oh yeah, okay, this is the stats here. So what is it? 227 games, uh, yeah, and 71.81, so almost 72% win rate in that it's that's just mental right i mean at tier nine and as i said most of the games um certainly it seemed to me i was up tiered as well so let's have a let's have a recap anyway so this is a mentally op tank in my opinion it's just wow it's it's too much fun it's too good and um, two guns give basically make it two tanks like the t49 before it's so different but obviously you want to get that top gun because everybody wants to fire the missiles right the missile gun is the fun gun, right? Um, and also it's great practice for the tier 10 Sheridan because it's exactly the same gun system. And get your missiles while you can because honestly I think they will go. 
and it would be a pity but I think they have to go for all the reasons I've explained. The tank itself you've got 16 second reload, 452 millimeter um, uh, gun, um, great part of weight ratio, this tank is so nimble, it also has great traverse, you know it's just you saw there in those different brawls, it was just mental, yeah, it's just an excellent brawler. You know, um, but you know, it, by the way, if you're watching this and you don't have this, um, you know, cave, cave, ludio, ludius, cave, player beware because this tank is just too good. Gun alignment is great, speed, view range, concealment, it's just all a winning combo. And it's a tiny, tiny target, you, and you get these troll bounces, they're just mental. You saw them in almost every game I played, I was getting these. You know, and it's just it's just crazy stuff. The tank is way over P. It's an amazingly fun tank, but it is broken. And it's not good for blitz for all the reasons I described during the during the gameplay and during the footage. And I think therefore they have to change it. I think they have to get rid of the missiles for starters, but they're probably gonna um they're probably gonna nerf this in the power to weight ratio, speed, something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers Mush. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And I guess all that remains for me to say is pants off.